Greetings and salutations. I guess I can't really say happy holidays anymore. Well, actually, happy holidays may be fine, but I can't say Merry Christmas anymore because this past weekend we just had our Christmas of 2020, which means we're just one step closer to this terrible fucking year finally being over. But before we get to that, we still have yet some time or some days to go through. In the meantime, let me bestow upon you my obligatory Christmas haul. Now, I did post a poll on this channel to ask you guys whether you wanted to see two videos where one will break down the Black Friday haul and then the other will break down the one from Christmas or just kind of fuse it all into one singular video. Ultimately, I ended up going with the latter because sadly with life coming up and having uh, the social aspect of that and my day job and just time didn't a lot for me to be able to create two videos. But here I am to bring you guys a combo pack of my Black Friday and Christmas haul 2020. Let's go. So first off, I'm going to start with the more intimate presents, the ones that came from either the girlfriend, family, friends, loved ones, co-workers, all of those combined into one singular amalgamation for the first half. And then I'll talk about all the stuff that I pretty much ended up spoiling myself with through Black Friday and Christmas sales. First on the docket is uh, right here. That's right. You're looking at it. No, uh, <laughs> it's actually the jacket that I'm wearing. This was actually the very first gift given from the girlfriend. So thank you, baby. Much appreciated, even though you're probably not going to watch this video. But uh, I do fancy myself a, fa a really nice and built, well built and quality leather jacket. And I'm always never going to say no to one, especially one that even she refers to as being modeled after Wolverine played by Hugh Jackman, only because of the lining. I know it's not the exact same one, but I'm always having a fondness for jackets like such as this. It also comes with a little bit of hoodie right there. But what I really appreciate is the extra padding that's kind of going on right here where it's not super fuzzy that it makes you overly hot, but it's padded enough and lined enough to keep you warm during the most nippiest of seasons. So really appreciate of this. I'm glad. So now I can officially say that I'm one step closer to being inside of Hugh Jackman. Real talk though, I will go gay for Hugh Jackman. He can sing, he can dance, he can act, he can pretty much do it all. And he sells coffee. What's even funnier is that I actually have a close friend of mine who works with me at my retail job and he would go gay for Ryan Reynolds. So I feel like there's a little bit of a connection somewhere there. Next up. It's a lamp. So a little bit of an anecdote here. My mom is not particularly savvy as far as what to get me for Christmas as of recent years, only because she knows something that I'm also self-aware of myself is that I often beat her as well as almost anybody that I know to the punch when it comes to getting myself what I want. I'm sorry, but I'm impulsive. Uh, and often that actually ends up paying off in my benefit because sometimes those things that I'm after either are sold out or become unattainable to some extent. So because of that, my mom kind of dug within her ridges of her room to find exactly what would be a good fit for me as far as the present, wrapped it up and decided to give it to me. Now that's not to say that this will not have some kind of uses in the future, especially it being a lamp with a USB port to charge your device. One can never have enough lamps to, you know, keep things illuminated, especially myself where I'm using a plethora of different lamps, one desk lamp, a clamp, spotlight over there, and then a ring light from Bower attached to my tripod here. So I'm very diverse when it comes to my lighting sources. And I feel like there's going to be a place for this one, especially when me and the girlfriend finally move in. Maybe I can have a corner of my area where I'm going to be talking about action figures or whatnot. And this will probably find a decent home in that whole kind of setup. But for now, in the box, it shall remain. At work, despite the circumstances with COVID and scheduling and all of the obstacles that we were being thrown at us, we were able to pull off a albeit rather short Secret Santa. And because of that Secret Santa, we had to randomly pick a person, choose one of the three gifts they listed on a little piece of paper that were under a $25 cap, and pick out exactly something out for them. And what I wrote down for the other person to get me is one of the little things that I managed to receive for this year. And it's ultimately a very fine addition to my Steelbook collection that will then show up in a future update video like the one that just recently posted. And that is for my favorite Studio Ghibli movie, Kiki's Delivery Service. That's right. I don't often hear too many people talk about this movie. Say what you want about Spirit Away or Howling, Howling, Howling Howler's Moving Castle. Almost butchered that name. 
But this is the one that for some strange reason it holds a very near and dear place in my heart because it just has this layer of wholesomeness and and tenderness that I just don't find in many other Studio Ghibli movies, despite the fact that Studio Ghibli movies are so amazing. I recently watched Spirit Away, and though I recognize it as a fine piece of art, there's something about this movie that I feel like it's ultimately rewatchable for me, especially around the holiday time. And now coming in this limited edition steelbook, I am definitely appreciative of that, so thank you. Also got this new sweet blender bottle from the older brother. It's funny because not only have I been needing a new blender bottle because my current one is starting to get that little plasticky taste that I'm not a huge fan of, but also I like the look of it. I like the color. It's red, so I was all for it. It's metallic. It insulates cold for 24 hours. Neato! But it wasn't until I turned it around and found myself in pure delight seeing that it has a spider symbol etched right on the side there out of the painting. So it is in fact a Spider-Man themed blender bottle and I'm definitely appreciative. Thanks bro. Really love it. And now we shall move to the very close family gifts bundled here in this ugly ass ugly ass re uh, reindeer bag but i'm glad that this bag came in clutch to pretty much hold everything that i had received that uh thursday night 24th because i am hispanic most specifically mexican and we just do not like to wait until christmas morning we do it the night so first on the docket here is actually going to be a axe <laughs> hygienic set that comes with a deodorant, a body spray, and a body wash, all from Axe, flavored with the scent of Phoenix. So you could say I will rise like the Phoenix sideways. Now let's get the elephant out of the room. You know for a fact that this is the gift that you would hate receiving when you were a kid, all right? Because it was either this or socks, but you know deep down in, in your soul, you wanted that N64. And this is what you have to settle for. Now as an adult, you can never have too many hygienic products or socks. And here, I would probably say that my favorite part is actually going to have to be the body wash because I am a body wash guy. I was soaked for so many years until finally one day I had a body wash and my mom gave me this loofah, tried it. It was very minty fresh, especially in the nether regions, and I have never been able to go back. And so I can never not I can never have enough body wash. I'm always running out and this is a very fine addition, so it will definitely be used. I don't think this is mine. I'm gonna have to text her. Uh, okay. Moving on. So virtually everything else that's in this bag, because that axe set was actually from her aunt to kind of, you know, give some, something over to me so I didn't feel left out when we went over to her house. But here I have pretty much everything that was bundled together that was a combo pack between my girlfriend and her parents and or and or family. So, and there's also a little bit of a running theme here, but before we tackle those themes, I just want to get a couple of miscellaneouses out of the way. As I mentioned before, can never get enough of socks, especially the long form ones, not the, not the cut ones, not the ones that cut off at the angle. I hate those. I feel naked with those. So I like my shins to be covered and bald, <laughs> which the latter was actually a side effect from wearing such long socks, but there are my preference and here added to the collection is going to be some classic spidey socks right there in the red with the red webbing and the symbol right there in the middle so we got those and then we also have uh, a form of apparel here that has absolutely no design or pattern whatsoever it is quite literally a long sleeve black short a black shirt yeah but here's the thing I've actually kind of dropped a hint that I'm running low on long sleeves of anything, so I am definitely going to be using this, whether it be for work or at home use. But then we also get another black t-shirt, only this time it does come with a little bit of a design that I absolutely adore, which is going to be a pixelized graphic of one of my favorite potentially improvised scenes from the original Star Wars, where Han Solo is trying to distract the uh, stormtroopers from coming down it to give Luke time to find Princess Leia in the cell blocks. And that's his improvised line there. I believe it was improvised by Heron Ford, otherwise I am wrong, where he is telling them that everything's fine here. Everything's fine now. We're all good now. Thank you. How about you? <laughs> it's just, it never ceases 
to get a crack out of me. And then from here is where we move on to that theme that I was talking about. And that theme is going to be one of my favorite shows ever, one of my favorite comedies ever, that I actually like to take some inspiration from when it comes to writing my comedies. It is, of course, The Office. And this year, I feel like with the roller coaster that's been 2020, The Office has served a great escape to not only mend our sorrows, uh, cheer our souls up, but also create some banging memes. And one of the things that was added, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show it off on camera here, to this little gift bag is a fleece throw, aka a very thin, small, yet portable blanket that you may or may not have seen in places like Hot Topic or Spencer's Gifts. <laughs> But this one is is ultimately designed from one of the running gags or running um, establishments, rather, in the office. And that is Dwight Schutz Beat Farm. And so this blanket, if I extend it, you will notice at the top it says Schrute. In the middle it says Farms or Farm. I think it, oh, it's Farms. And then at the bottom it says People Love Beats. With the beat graphic right there on the far left side bears beats Battlestar Galactica Michael but if one pair of socks wasn't enough I also managed to get another one only this time it is of course Dunder Mifflin socks so yet another property added to my shins and then there's only one other gift left in this little bag here but I straight up told my girlfriend that this is probably going to be my favorite part of this entire gift because there's just something so novel about it and it's definitely something that I want to incorporate somehow into my set dressing here for my reviews and or streams by the way if you guys couldn't tell I do stream on Twitch Facebook gaming and on this year channel Dark Spire David on YouTube so if you guys want to check out the other platforms links are going to be in the description I stream about two or three times a week Playing different games right now, of course, I'm trying to course through Cyberpunk, but then entering 2021, we've got some backlogs, we've got some other games that you could potentially request for me to play. So check those out, and uh, we'll see you there. But my girlfriend went ahead and got me a replica plate of the Office title card right there, and I love this thing. On the back, there's actually two adhesive pieces. Bars. And if you couldn't already guess, you can open this up and slap it either on the front of a door or on the wall or somewhere that you want to kind of let people know that a humongous office fan. And I love this thing. I just, I, I love it. I almost wish I could have maybe like two so that one can probably go on my door and then the other could probably adorn a part of, like I said, my set dressing here for my streams, whether it be here or just somewhere that's going to be within view. I don't know exactly if it's going to fit in the streams well because often I use the green screen technology to cut out my background anyway, but what do you guys think? I'm actually open to suggestions, so if you have an idea for where this can go, either for my videos or for my streams, drop it down below in the comment section and I will take a look. And if I'm not mistaken, that's pretty much wraps up everything that I received on Christmas Day slash Eve slash whatever it is that I got intimately from family and friends. So thank you guys. Much appreciated. Love you all. Now let's get to the stuff that I got myself <laughs> uh, without sounding too self-indulgent. Now before I get to the stuff that I did manage to get with deals cut from Black Friday and stuff like that, let me just showcase two particular sets here that I got at standard price, but they are limited edition. They are either rare, but I was able to acquire them between the periods of Black Friday and Christmas. And so I kind of consider them as somewhat Christmas gifts to myself. Now, one of them I'm a little bit on the fence of because I saw some reviews for it say that it's actually not all that jazz, so I'm still deciding as to whether or not I'm actually gonna keep it, but nevertheless, it is making somewhat of a visual impression on me. And it, that goes beyond different meanings. And it's for one of my favorite trilogies of all time, and that is going to be the Lord of the Rings trilogy on 4k collector's edition and this collector's edition harbors not just the entire trilogy on 4k both theatrical and extended editions but it also comes in this packaging that's rep that's made to look kind of like the original jr tolkien book the book that har uh, uh, harbors all three uh tales you know fellowship of the ring two towers and return of the king but on top of that on the inside houses a replica of the one ring 
inside right there. Now, the reason why I'm on the fence is because apparently there's some reviews that have been posted online saying that the quality of the packaging as well as the ring itself is not exactly all that great, especially for the difference between this and the standard 4K set that you could buy separately for like 90 bucks. So a lot of people were up in arms about that. So I have yet to make up my mind if I'm going to keep this sealed and return it or if I'm going to finally pull the trigger, open it up and check it out for myself and kind of let that money go to where it does. But needless to say, I wanted to jump at the bit to see if this is something worth collecting. So I'll keep you guys updated as far as that. But one that I do see myself keeping because you guys just know, as you saw with my Kiki's Delivery Service Steelbook, that I am a avid Steelbook collector. Not just that, but recently I actually managed to post an update video on my Steelbook collection, which doesn't even begin to cover the additions that I've added to the collection since the very first video. And if you guys want to check that out, there's either going to be a card somewhere here on the video, or you can simply just check out the channel, and it's one of the most recent videos that I posted. And joining a future update video on that collection is going to be <laughs> the Lord of the Rings trilogy on Steelbook. So ideally, it's pretty much the same thing as this, except it doesn't come with the one ring, but instead, it is contained in a tin box set here that contains three separate and rather gorgeous looking steelbooks for all three original Lord of the Rings films restored to 4K on Blu-ray and 4K and as well as digital copies. But it's those three covers. It's those three steelbooks that I'm like, you know what, regardless of what reviewers have said about the actual transfer quality of the trilogy from Blu-ray to 4K and the comparisons that I have seen, as well as the one here with the one ring that might or may not be meeting standards, this sucker is very, very likely staying. However, either version, there is one problem I'm already having. No special features. I mean, I understand I have my Blu-ray set over there with dozens of hours of special features, but it would be nice to have them all in one home, which is why I am also anticipating that potential collector's edition that's going to have the three Lord of the Rings and three Hobbit films that come out sometime next year to celebrate the official 20th anniversary of Fellowship of the Ring. So that's where my uh, my hesitance to keep this guy it lies because I know that there's going to be a much more definitive edition that's going to come with everything here plus the special features on one package along with the Hobbit. So, uh, yeah, time to go broke again. Now, let's travel back in time. <laughs> Little moments like that do make me wish that E3 would come back. I know it's past its time of return, but they just don't make cringe moments like that like they used to. All right, regardless of how you feel while watching them, you're gonna go back to them and be like, those were some great times. <laughs> so let's travel back to not necessarily Black Friday, but rather Black Month. Wait, of course I'm talking about November because Black Friday or rather the holidays in general were gonna play out very, very differently due to the COVID pandemic because it was inevitable that it, Black Friday was not going to be able to be carried out across different retailers as it generally is for the concerns of safety, even though most people will probably not give a shit. So in efforts to try to not get sued, different retailers decided to kind of spread like butter all the deals that they would usually hold for just Black Friday and kind of spread them across the month of November. Retailers uh, ranging from Best Buy, to Target, to Walmart, to Amazon. There were different deals happening on different days and portions of the month. So I can't officially call this the Black Friday haul, but rather the Black Friday month or Black month of November haul that I was able to kind of acquire as time kind of rolled over, which is why I couldn't really bring myself to be like, yes, on this one Black Friday, this is what I got. So now that I know that all the sales and deals are behind us, this is officially what my haul of video games looks like. And we're going to start off with some Switch games, particularly two that went on sale on the exact same time because they were a daily deal or deal of the day rather over at Best Buy when they were very clear and stout for a hefty discount. And that's going to be these two Switch games right here. One of them is called Close to the Sun and the other one's called Grip. Close to the Sun is meant to be like a first person adventure game that revolves around the 1890s, uh, around the concepts of Nikola Tesla and all that steampunky goodness. And then we have this one, Grip, which is meant to be more of a racer, but like an arcadey kind of racer with what looks like hovercrafts and monster cars a la maybe Wipeout. So that's got me intrigued. But what had me even more uh, intrigued was the fact that these games usually retail for a good 25 to 30 bucks and each were discounted 
to a meek five bucks a piece. Yeah, how can I pass that up? It's almost like free Switch games. If you are able to uh, portion your money just right, I was like, you know what? Let's pick these bad boys up. Here's a game that's probably going to make for some rather entertaining streams. Catherine, full bodied edition on the Switch from Atlas. This game was retailing for 50 bucks, but on Black Friday it was going down to 20. And so on the Switch, considering its cartoony kind of look, I figured, you know what? I can take this with me on the go. And also when I dock it, this is most definitely a game that people might want to see me react to on streams, considering that I don't violate TOS or anything like that. Be XCOM 2 Collection on the Switch from 2K. This is the original game as well as the War of the Trojan expansion and four DLC packs all bundled together on the same cartridge, which is gnarly, at least I'm assuming it's all the same cartridge. And this is pretty, uh, pretty nifty because this feels like the type of game with the uh, strategy, RTS strategy kind of layout from <laughs> Mario Rabbids, even though I know it came before Mario Rabbids, so you know, don't, don't stone me here. But this is a game that I really wanted to play, but I didn't want to pay the full $50 price that this was released at. And it eventually got some mild discounts here and there, but recently, not even on Black Friday, but about a few days before Christmas, this was knocked down to 17 bucks at Best Buy. And I was like, yeah, I think now, I can pull the trigger on it. Moving on, out. moving out, moving out, which is something that I desperately want to do. But for the time being, we're going to settle for the Switch game from Team 17. If you're getting some Overcooked vibes, that's because you are. This is from the same developer as Overcooked, and I'm looking forward to playing with my girlfriend to test our relationship once again, because we were having some times playing Overcooked, and I feel like this is going to be no exception. Uh, the gameplay is pretty similar, only instead of cooking, you have to move uh, appliances and different furniture and stuff out of one room or house to another, and only chaos can ensue. And the Switch is definitely the platform to do it, to be able to split up the Joy-Cons, take it with me on the go, and seeing that this was knocked down a hefty price, I honestly can't remember how much I paid for it, but I know for a fact that it was more than half off. So this was a very welcome addition. And then the last Switch game was actually the one that I know people far and wide were saying how amazing this game is, how great of a remake and as polished as it was. But I just, with the style and everything like that, 60 bucks, you know, I had to make some choices. But seeing it go down to 40 though, especially for a first party Nintendo title, all right, fine, let's do it. Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening on the Switch. I know a lot of people were praising this game back in 2019 and I do feel quite bad about missing it out but now it's finally time to clear out of the backlog and it's been added here. I also got a couple of Xbox games, emphasis on couple because it's quite literally just two uh, which is crazy considering that I did get the Series X but I know that Game Pass is really where it's going to be at for me but I did add some releases and they really are some close releases but the Black Friday sales were a little too hefty to ignore. And the first one is going to be Watch Dogs Legion, a game that I'm looking forward to not only playing but also streaming. Though I have yet to play Watch Dogs 2 on PS4, I have it on the backlog, it's right over there, I just have to eventually get to it. But I did play the original, thought it was fun, I did like it, I wasn't in love with it, but I took it for what it was. But Watch Dogs Legion though, you mean to tell me that I can make an entire army of killer assassin grannies? British no less? Oh. Well, hold my crumpets, Agatha. That was terrible. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna do that again. I'm not gonna do that again. And then we have Yakuza Like a Dragon. This is a very interesting one because just like with Watch Dogs Legion, only to an even broader extent, I have not played a single Yakuza game despite owning, quite fucking frankly, the entire franchise. I have Zero uh, digitally, and then I have Kiwami, Kiwami 2 on Steelbooks, 3, 4, and 5 with the PS4 collection that came out just recently on physical with the extra PS3 case. And then I even have 6 with the little booklet inside. Yet to play any of them. So in the backlog they are currently are. However, what makes Yakuza Like a Dragon rather interesting is because this one is actually completely separate from the storyline that was kind of unfolding in that original series. This one takes place with a, in a different place in a different area, even though it's still connected to the universe, and with a completely different protagonist. So this is, from what I hear, a very fine entry point. This was also one of the launch titles for the Series X because it does get, uh, on day one, that next-gen upgrade. 
PS4 users are going to have to wait for that on PS5. I, I believe in February is when that uh, update is going to be coming. But what really sweetened the deal for me was that not only was this reduced from its original $60 price tag to $35 bucks over at Best Buy, but not only do we get one steelbook as part of the Day Ichi Steelbook Edition that this version really is, they threw in a second one. I don't want to show it too much on, on screen because sadly, from what I've heard some other people say, the cover is a little spoilery, so I'm not going to show too, too much there. And if you guys don't want to look at it, don't stop. Stop looking at it. Stop looking at it. But there it is. You get two steelbooks for the price of one. Definitely a nice little buy there. And we are coming down to the wire, but of course we cannot leave PlayStation out. Now, I didn't exactly add any more PS5 games to my library. So no, no Demon Souls, no Sackboy. Uh, no Call of Duty Black Ops or uh, Cold War, whatever the hell you're thinking I might have added since then. But these are still technically PS4 games that could be played on the PS5. And one of them is from all places, GameStop. Now, I understand that this game was already free on PlayStation Plus as of recently. And technically, I, I did add it to my library at the time. But it's very difficult for me. And I consider this somewhat of a, a bad habit, a problem that I have. Very difficult for me to pass up on a cool special edition or deluxe edition, especially when you're only asking $10 for it, over half off from its original price. And that is for a game called The Surge 2. This is actually a GameStop exclusive for the limited edition. You can only find these at GameStop. And this is not only the original copy of the game, but this is a deluxe edition that comes with a double poster with artwork, three exclusive lithographs, exclusive eight page comic book, lenticular exclusive cover. They say exclusive three times to make it clear here on the back of the box but i love little collectible versions of games like this and i feel like they're you know very limited and, and and very rare and i feel like eventually this is going to kind of somewhat go up in value so i'm like you know what let me jump at the bit and considering it was only 10 bucks i was like you know what this kind of look rather nice on the shelf don't you think for that same price i was also able to pick up medieval which it's weird because I'm having a little bit of a Mandela effect thing going on that makes me think that this was a game on PS Plus some time ago. But if it wasn't before, it eventually will. But 10 bucks for a physical copy of what I hear is a pretty decent remake of a classic arcade kind of uh, dungeon crawler and also a very fine addition to the potential spoopy games come next October. But that's not the only addition that will probably be joining the Halloween games for next year. Resident Evil now, this is a very interesting one because people were taking a liking to my playthroughs of Resident Evil 2 Remake, and then they called the attention to 3 and asked me if I was going to pick it up. However, at the time, I was very aware of the fact that this is a rather short game, to, a little too short for what they were asking for, 60 bucks. In fact, that factored into so many people's opinions. But for 15 Okay. Okay. Fine. I'll, I'll, I'll pull the trigger and add it here. I don't think it can really get any lower than 15 so that's a very decent bargain. And around that same kind of price for 13 bucks was another game that I'm looking forward to not just playing but also uh, streaming because there's bound to be some hilarity and swimming with this game. That's a game called Maneater if you guys have heard of it. Basically, it's an RPG where you play as a shark. And it's a RPG through and through because not only can you play as this shark and eat people, which is the whole goal of the entire game, but you can also level up your shark. You can level it up. You can add it armor. You can switch out the teeth. It's, it's insane. All right. And there's no other better way to explain it than just play it for you guys. And I'm looking forward to bringing you content of this game. Plus, it's narrated by the dad, Chris Parnell, the dad from Rick and Morty. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be funny. This is a really curious one. Mortal Shell. Pick this up half off, usually 30 bucks, down to 15. And this is gonna be a very curious playthrough because this is a game that is taking hefty inspiration from Dark Souls. If you've seen some gameplay when it was first announced, it was very reminiscent of a From Software game. And it, I hear that it's not as deep or as inventive or as broad or as vast or as even long as some of those games that it's inspiring to be, but still a very fine addition if you like to test your limits as a gamer, or if you're a streamer and you want to uh, rage out for the camera. I, I'm pretty certain that's going to going to be waiting for me when I finally get to this game, but it feels rather heavy. I feel like there's something in here. I feel like there's something in here, so if you could sweeten the deal by throwing in a classic, in-depth, 
uh, manual with some great artwork and designs inside of it. Color me tickled. And lastly is a game that is probably going to be controversial that I added to my... To my collection here from the Black Friday uh, sales that were going on and this was pretty universal because almost re every retailer was cutting this game down but you kind of have to when you lost almost like what is it 80 or 80 something percent of your player base after going games as a service when you probably shouldn't have have done otherwise I probably would have kept my pre-order but uh went and canceled it after seeing what was kind of unfolding from the game, which could in turn make me a little hypocritical that I went and bought this game. But let me explain to you why. That game is, of course, Avengers on PlayStation 4. So let me give you guys a little in-depth uh, walkthrough to me purchasing this game. This is the PlayStation 4 version, so eventually Spider-Man is going to be joining the fray, and there will be a next-gen update, I believe, uh, also in February or March, if I'm not mistaken. And I purchased this at Best Buy, going from 60 bucks down to 30 However, however, who says that I officially bought this game? Because I bought this with a handful of other games as a pickup order. When I, it came to that transaction, not only did I have a $20 Best Buy gift card, I also had a $10 certificate from my rewards accumulation at that retailer. So $20 on the gift card plus the 10, gee, what is that? 30 bucks? So if I add those 30 bucks of savings to the order that had Avengers in it, don't you agree with me that technically that's considering this game to be a... Uh, Free. Nevertheless, though, I'm looking forward to playing the single player campaign because from what I've seen, it still looks pretty entertaining and the weak sauce in me says, yes, it's still Avengers. I get to play as Iron Man, Captain America. All right, fine. Fuck it. Plus, it, it, it's definitely worth it when Best Buy is at least, like I said, sweetening the deal as the theme of this video is ending up being by throwing in yet another collectible steelbook, one that I was very sad to let go of when I did cancel my original play uh, pre-order because this is one of the little goodies that I was looking forward to the most is knowing that I was going to get a very nice looking steelbook and that's one good thing that I can definitely see from adding this purchase to my collection and ladies and gentlemen that about does it for not just my Black Friday haul but also my Christmas haul for 2020 and there's not much more really to cover except to now throw it over to you guys and let me know in the comments how did your Thanksgiving as well as your Christmas play out despite the hurdles and tribulations and obstacles that 2020 presented upon us at, even outside of COVID or everything that was going on politically, religiously, ethically. Let me know how your guys' uh, holidays went by in the comment section below. What was your favorite thing that you got as far as a gift? What was your favorite thing that you gave as a gift? And what were some of your fondest memories? But more importantly, I also kind of want to use this as a little bit of an addendum considering that this potentially will be my last video for 2020 considering that I'm still scrambling around for content to be edited together and be posted. I'm still trying to beat Cyberpunk for review and also have a little bit of a renovating kind of project going on here in my room. So I'll leave you guys with this is that if you guys are tired of a good chunk of the shittiness that was 2020 then I have some news for you. It's ultimately up to us. It's up to us. Nobody else is going to do it for us. Whether it be change or transformation, whether it be continuing to wear those masks or following those protocols of staying six feet apart or just getting used to ordering takeout. That's just what's going to have to be done because we have prime examples to show us how badly we need to change. And they're all around the world, quite literally. So many fucking countries have already beaten this thing, and yet here we are still with our hands in our pockets. It's time to take them out, and it's time to do the right fucking thing. See you guys in 2021. And as always, stay humble. Christmas is coming, but I'm not here.